Hi, and it's Lilia here with the Help Yourself podcast, and I'm very excited at 7am this beautiful Scottish morning to have Sally Gray all the way from Australia streaming in. Sally is a stress master, neuroscientist, and naturopath. And Sally, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It's so lovely to be speaking with you, Lilia. Now, we share a passion for the vagus nerve. So we're going to be discussing yes. the vagus nerve. And another thing that's very close to my heart is our, the health of our children and um, how we ensure that we are giving them the best possible uh, start in their, in their lives. And we can mentor them along the way. But can we just start with the vagus nerve? And would you like to just tell people, because I know a lot of people still have not even really heard the name. Can you start just with the vagus nerve, please? And what you've discovered Happily, happily, because I really feel like it is, it has opened my eyes, not only for my own personal peace and pleasure in, on this planet and experience, but from a professional perspective, I've always been one of those people that is just the why person. What's behind that? Why, why is that happening? What's the deepest core reason for suffering? Having been a naturopath for 27 years, it is, of course, my professional desire to, to resolve the, the real reason why clients come to see me. Yes. And so that, I think it's that question that has always inspired me to go to the deepest possible level. And so what I started to observe is that we can manage symptoms just fine in this world, can't we? we can, we've, got, we've got that nailed. There are thousands of ways we can manage a symptom. And if one way doesn't work, we can find another way. But what we're not doing is truly resolving what we're experiencing when we're experiencing something unwanted, whether that's a, a physical health issue or whether that is a relationship problem or whether that is a life purpose issue or a career issue, whatever, whatever it is, whatever the pain seems to be outside of ourselves, we can manage it in some way. And that's never, that's never satisfied me personally. Oh, 100%. I think, yeah. I, like you, there's something missing. What is missing? Yeah. We know more about food than we've ever known about. We know how to, the chemical yep. breakdown of every single thing, but it's not helping us. You know, no. the de disease pandemic is getting worse. So, yes. so carry on. Yeah, that's a lot yes. already. <laughs> it is. It is. It, it is just, if we had nailed it, uh -huh we'd know the answer. It would be that new supplement of which, you know, there's new ones coming out every single day, but it's not. And so what I've been blessed to discover in my, with my permanent seeking attitude is, is that there is a core of this human experience that is being widely neglected. So yes. we come in at the time when there's a symptom, at the time when we have anxiety or depression or an obvious pain a thorn in our side and what we need to do is to shift our perspective slightly to ask the question where did this start where does this come from because what we're experiencing when we when with anything in life is the end result of the most pervasive law that that we live by and many people don't realize is the law of cause and effect so we experience the effect and we go in and try and fix the effect. We go in and try and fix the end result of some, another starting point. So we don't have hormonal imbalance. That's not the problem. That's mm -hmm. the end result. We mm -hmm. don't have anxiety. Now, children don't have anxiety. That's the end result. So when we speak to the core reason, the cause which goes back to mind. We can, we can identify what it is that is producing the unwanted experiences. And as it turns out, our brain really is the, the master conductor. It's being told what to do. Mm -hmm. It is through the vagus nerve, which is what we're here discussing today, which is a nerve that we all have. Every single human on this planet has a vagus nerve and it is powerful. And it is either working as our most powerful ally, supporting our health, or its potential is diminished because it's not activated because we are stuck in stress, which happens to be everyone's story. And I'm sure we'll be talking about this. 
a lot more in our, in our time together. But it is the vagus nerve that runs from our brain with the message that's being sent from our brain to all parts of our body, whether to be well or not. That's pretty much the bottom line. And so when we engage in activities like changing diet or micromanaging nutrition to get the right vitamins and minerals or taking supplements or doing anything at that level to impact our experience, what we're doing is actually doing nothing more than, than creating a framework for temporary results at best. Because unless we speak to what is informing the vagus nerve how to behave in the body, whether it's sending a message of health or, or shut down in its capacity to do that, is what is, is going to determine whether we heal, whether we're healthy for the long term, whether we're happy, whether we live peacefully. Mm -hmm. And so the vagus nerve is what we call the, the, the queen of the nervous system. It is our peace potential and peace and relaxation is what uh, the vagus nerve has to offer in terms of its power. And what we know is that when we are relaxed, the body can heal. When we are not, the body can't. And it is pretty much as simple as that. The vagus nerve stems from, from high up in our, uh, in our um, spinal column near the 10th vertebrae, in fact. So it's right up at the top of our neck and, it, and then it disseminates and wanders all through the body to all of the key organs, particularly the digestive system, but also the heart. Yes. And it's... It's, it has to be sending a message of we're, we're cool, we're chilled out, we're relaxed, everything's okay in order for the gut to function well, in order for the microbiome to be robust and healthy, in order for the heart to be in coherence yes. and, and doing its work to support how the body can, can be peacefully working and functionally opti optimally. But if the vagus nerve which is part of the parasympathetic nervous system, isn't working properly, that's because it is the sympathetic nervous system. It's, it's kind of um, enemy, for want, yes. of a better, for, for want of a better word, <laughs> the stress system that is at play. And, and unfortunately, we've become masters of stress. Yes, absolutely. We've become masters of stress. We, we don't, we're in stress and we don't even know we're stressed most of the time. I know. Well, I think that's... That's something that I got from you because you and I spoke before when I was in the community last year, which was fantastic. Um, and the, the fact that, you know, we all know to some degree that trauma in the past is playing a, a part in our future if we don't understand and address it. And I think the yeah. big thing I took away from our talk last time was, um, and this is quite obvious actually when you think about it, is that you can have a trauma or a perceived trauma, which I think is really interesting as well. If you imagine something awful happens, the body can imprint that. And then that's bad enough for the body, but then on a daily basis, if you relive it, the vagus nerve, again, continuously in that fight or flight, continuously thinking there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem. That is what wears wears you down energetically and depresses mm. the immune system. So it's that mm. daily, it's what, what's happening today. And I always say this to my clients, it's what you do on a daily basis that makes you sick or makes you well. You know, the retreat is awesome. The one-to-one -one session's awesome. You've got as much knowledge as you can shake a stick at now, but it's the daily practice that um, will get you the result. Yes. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. And I think that it's, it's incredibly important to unravel the mess that we find ourselves in. We're in a mess and we don't even realise we are. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I also want to point out that it's not just trauma that, that is causing us to be in stress and for the vagus nerve to not be activated in the way that we need it to be to, to thrive. Uh -huh. We're not here just to survive. We're here to thrive in a high level of emotional well-being and physical well-being we aren't at the mercy of outside in influences we are the makers of our experience from the inside out 
So it's really valuable to know that that law of cause and effect is in operation because the effect that we experience in our lives stems from the cause, which is our mind. And our mind is driving what's going on in our brain and our nervous system. Mm -hmm. And so when we have a perception of anything that could threaten be perceived as a threat in our brain so obviously we have the physical threat so many people these days have heard of the amygdala that that tiny little primitive part of our brain that is there to keep us alive mm -hmm. and it's it's on threat detection essentially making sure we're not going to get you know taken out by a rogue lion yes. or or that that sixth sense when we feel like a ball might be coming to our head to hit us or that yeah. there's a bus coming our way so we've got this inbuilt mechanism that keeps us safe but there is as part of that what's called the extended amygdala in the brain another little uh, part of the brain that's called the bnst and that is the equivalent alert system that is checking in with our emotions and so yes. if we don't have emotions that are it's all good relax mm -hmm then we've got stress happening as well. So it's it's rarely the big stuff we ever need to worry about. As you said, it's the day-to-day -day experiences that alert us to what's going on in our brain. Because if we aren't experiencing wake up, feel great, get out of bed, have energy, feel happy, just those basic requirements for a happy life, yes. then we are in stress. Uh -huh. And it hasn't necessarily come from trauma. It comes from the beliefs that are the filters through which we perceive life. Mm -hmm. And whilst many people have had trauma, most people probably haven't, but they have had the experience of being yelled at enough times that they thought there was something wrong with them, told that they weren't good enough at some stage. So we've all got these beliefs playing that happen to be incredibly important and play out in every moment of our lives, even though they happened decades ago. Whatever happened between zero and seven is, is the, the downloading time for all of us. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have parents, and let's face it, who did? This is not about parent beating. This yeah. is about we just replay life on, automate, on automated um, You turn into your parents. Yes. yes. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah, we turn into our parents. And until we, we go, why do I feel so dreadful? Why do I have no energy? Why do I feel overwhelmed? Why can't I make a decision? Why am I so tired? Why am I so worried? Why am I so anxious? Yes. And realise this is where we go back to to actually fix the problem uh -huh. at the core rather than be on a lifelong um, pharmaceutical prescription or naturopathic prescription you know there's nothing us naturopaths can do yes that fix people in the way they think yeah that is absolutely. not what we're here for and we, we it is yeah yeah Sorry, i don't me. i don't know if in um, australia it's the same but i know um, in, uh, in scotland in glasgow and in edinburgh to get any kind of psychological help you're looking at a year waiting time because people yeah. just don't, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we all know what can happen in a year if you don't get the correct help. And that's why I've started this movement, Heal Scotland, which is just to actually get the people to help the people, to get the education, to get all the information that you're giving us now, which I think is just so exciting and invaluable, um, out to the masses or at a rate that we just can't wait for the system to do it because we don't have time. So... What I would like to, two things I want to talk about here um, is the gut health, which we're hearing a lot about now, the gut biome. And obviously you have the kind of parasite, parasites, bacteria, fungus, candida sort of thing going on, but also how getting into coherence can rebalance that actually. And I think for me, the way I see it is we're either working on the kind of chemical, biological solidity of the body, or we're moving up when we start to talk about the vagus nerve more into the electromagnetic field. Is, is that how you see it? Can you, which where things can happen faster? <laughs> I always yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And that's, and that's been, I guess, one of the things that spurs me on. How do we get the result faster? Yes. How do we get the result that's permanent? Yes. That's exactly. really, really important questions to ask. Uh -huh. And so the point is we can't get an effect, the effect that we want 
all we're ever doing is looking for happiness. We oh. think that healing body symptoms is going to make us feel happy, but it's actually impossible. Uh -huh. We cannot heal physical symptoms because the core program has to be in alignment with that in order for that to happen. And so the way that I, I see it, the visual that I have is that it's a, it's a spectrum. Consider a stick, consider a ruler. The beginning of the ruler is the beginning yeah. of, of the communication that is telling the body how to be. Yes. How to be healthy, how to be diseased. So if we come in at the end of the stick, the other end of the stick where we see a symptom, we can spend a lifetime faffing around trying to find the right supplement, switching from this nutrition protocol to that nutrition protocol. And whilst I'm not dismissing those activities, yes. they aren't what's going to bring us the results that we're deeply looking for. Yes. What is going to, to expedite that dramatically, dramatically is to say, what's going on at the core? To look at the beliefs, the feelings, the thoughts, the subconscious program that is actually determining that outcome in the first place. Absolutely. I mean, Stan Lizov Groff, he talks about from the moment of conception, that's when the information starts to, that makes us, makes me you and makes you you. Um, so, yeah. you know, there can be a lot of like from how the mum and dad, how you were conceived, all of that, which is another Yes. rabbit hole will not bother going down yes. today but it is so let's so let's just talk about that a little bit more in depth in terms of like a lot of my clients have been diagnosed either terminal or incurable and we know that that's not always true these words are very terrifying very heavy and also yes. i think the way we see it is that when the body's starting to struggle and it starts puts the oil light on it's like listen to me listen to me but it speaks in a language that we don't generally understand because we we're looking for words but as the language of the body comes through and feelings and often intuition and shapes and colors and coincidences you know meeting people where we're, we're like trying the body's trying to guide us <laughs> and help us to wake up so with and this is sometimes i get driven crazy about the I mean, I'm a nutritionist too, but to be honest, I stopped uh, working with food because it drove me insane. We know what to, we know what not to eat, but we still people still find it very difficult to change their diet. Mm. So I'm much more interested on, in the energetic field, the thoughts, the feelings, and beliefs, which is primarily will they let it go, Sinclair? What I do mm. now, um, but that see to get people on you need to de deal with the da daily fear because the system our current system can terrify people literally to death i believe the fear that goes the waiting from appointment to appointment but how do you get people to say well look you have to look at your relationship with yourself maybe with you're in a toxic relationship or a work environment or a family environment maybe your beliefs you know that you've inherited even sometimes how do you get people to truly go there? And do you find that it's all you can do is really help start the process? How do you deal with that? Well, I think that we are in a, in a world where people are far more educated than ever. Even though it appears they're suffering more than ever, I'm, I rarely see someone who doesn't know about the vagus nerve or have heard about the amygdala or have some concept of mindfulness and is seeing their, the gap between what they know and desire and what they're actually experiencing to be the pain in their lives. Uh -huh. So people really do have a lot of, a lot of knowledge. And so I like to to talk about it in, in, a, in a very sequential uh, fashion so that it's understood intellectually and that the proven steps to going deeper, to break free from what it is that keeps us eating the same food, even though we know better, that keeps us from being kinder to ourselves, that keeps us, that keeps us stuck in the habit of reacting in a way that, you know, we've done it a thousand times. How can we not know it doesn't work out differently? <laughs> So there is a deep, there's, everyone knows this, even if they don't get it, get it, uh -huh. they do. We know that there is something deeper going on. It simply is that we need to have an education happening. 
and understanding. And so what you're doing is profound in that it will reach people who are ready to hear. And I think there's more people than ever ready to hear. And it's not necessarily what they will get even in the system, that we are the home of incredible wisdom. So I think when we learn to paint a picture or what I tend to do is paint a picture of here's what is your truth. Here's what is possible for you. You are the home of infinite wisdom. No one gave you the operating manual. Yeah. No one told us to look within for, for the answers, to, to just not listen to that first loud voice that is the naysayer, that is the, the drama storyteller, narrator of um, everything negative in the world. If we can learn to, to go deeper than that, and there is a very, very um, elegant way to do this, which I'll describe to you, because what we can do is break free from, from those patterns that seem to be so powerful and we don't want them anymore. They are subconscious. They are, they are profoundly programmed into our being from a very early age. Mm-hmm. Now, as I said, this isn't about blaming anyone because no one's parents were saying, Challenge your thinking, honey. Here you go. Here's the, here's the way that you do this. Don't listen to mummy and daddy. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever heard that one. In fact, it was more likely, don't question me. Uh-huh. Respect your elders. Do yes. as you're told. Because I say so. Yeah. And so we're all going, much more oh, honest. To say we've not got a clue, we didn't have a manual either. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Yes, Yes, but we don't because we're we're living at what I call the perceptual level. So we're living at at a level in life where where until we learn, until we're even just a little bit willing to go deeper, we can't break free. So if we continue to play the game of life at the level of perception where what I see is my my this person in my life that causes me grief what i see is this physical symptom that's causing me pain what i see is a president in the world that is a problem what i see is a situation of suffering that shouldn't be there what i'm seeing is all of these things that we could look at and we could we could recruit plenty of support to agree with us mm-hmm. that there's something that's unwanted in our human eyes from our human senses mm-hmm. That's the perceptual level. And that's where there isn't freedom. That's where you come to a naturopath and I give you a supplement or I tell you how to eat differently and you might get symptom relief. You might not, but it doesn't solve anything. Mm -hmm. What I want to talk about is how to go a little bit deeper to give your listeners some clues. But I want to share with you the most profound act of authenticity and courage that a client shared with me once that I had that I had a hint of. I knew this was the case, but no one had ever said it point blank to me until the day that my client, whose name happens to be Sally as well, mm. she'd done all of the work, which frankly is exhausting, to change your entire family's diet, to eat in a very rigid fashion. It affects everything. It yes. affects everything in life. You can't go out. You can't do anything that you want oh, to do. Absolutely. I know. I know. Yep, done the, the, the gut testing, the toxicity testing, taking all the supplements, finally managed to get relief from a chronic condition that her son was experiencing that was debilitating, mm-hmm. that was not being helped, not, couldn't possibly be helped. It was, here it is, this is yours for as long as you live, that's it. This is the best we can do. Here's, here's the pharmaceutical offering. Mm-hmm. So she managed to get the result that she was desiring, which is, I have to say, not always guaranteed anyway. Yes. That's why there's 5 million different types of supplements and and the next latest way of eating Mm -hmm. because there isn't a solution. That's got to tell us something. (laughs) And so she said to me, Sal, this is really painful and hurtful to say, but I feel really bad because I'm finally here and have what I thought would make me happy, which is my son not in pain anymore, and I still feel empty. Mm -hmm. This hasn't made me happy. 
yeah. what's wrong with me? Which yeah. is generally what most people say. What's wrong with me? Because we have such a deep belief that that we aren't seeing until we look in our lack, yeah. in our belief that we are powerless, that we are a victim, that we are unworthy of living with pure love, that it's not in our program. Yeah. So what we want to do is to, to understand that life is like, here's an analogy that most people hear, it's like an onion. Life is like a layer, a layered experience, a layered cake. And most of us want to put a cherry on top of a crap cake and call it something different. But we can't do that. And that's what I like in going to a naturopath, like trying to put a cherry on top of something else so that it's palatable. But yes. what we need to do oh, is to... Totally. <laughs> it, that was a pretty hard career realisation, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really help you. But what we all have, what we, what we are actually being called to do in all of our discomfort is something other than run away from it. Yes. We're actually so profoundly guided within, guided to grace. It is when we do this work so clear that the universe seems to be conspiring for our success and our happiness. Yes. And what we can learn to do is to go a little bit deeper because everything that is unwanted hides the truth. Mm -hmm. It is that voice of divinity that is behind that saying, look, look at this. It's being presented in our lives to look at, to go deeper because we are born free. And I agree that not even the most heinous um, diagnosis, which seems like a death sentence is as it appears for those who, who want to go deeper into the, into the truth to discover that what seems to be the surface experience of something really unwanted actually is hiding what's really there yes yeah that um, is i love yeah. i love that you know that you're the home of the infinite wisdom because i know that pe people used to say to me when i i mean i did a lot of healing of myself which is usually what happens isn't it you heal yourself and then you want to help others and um, they used to say you know it's all there everything you need to know is already inside and i was like so conceptually you can understand that now of course i've got a very different literal experience of that because i think the two words that keep coming to me is trust and surrender because yes. it's the resistance to what is that's causing you all the suffering <laughs> or what you perceive what is now another nugget i got from you the last time was um you said the four underlying beliefs were i'm not enough i'm not safe i'm not worthy and i'm not lovable and i do i still use that actually now you know with some testing to see and you know what came up for me was that I wasn't safe and yes. I was like wow now again my conscious mind if you'd said to me do you feel safe I mean I've been letting go for you know a decade and a half now you know I'm, I really feel that I'm not 100% able to master all my emotions but certainly most of the time I can change how I feel instantly if I can be bothered to do it <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> Um, you know, I do understand that conceptually you can change how you feel, but these subconscious things are vibrating away without you really consciously having a clue. And like you said, some people don't even know. And I was, I'm probably still in that category where there's things going on in here that are part of my attraction process, my experience in this outer world that um, are being affected by these deep beliefs and mm concepts and labels that I have taken on wittingly or unwittingly. So yeah. can we just, because again, we could talk about this for the entire time, but I really want to dovetail now into our kids because one of the big reasons I started the Heal Scotland movement is because I have grandchildren and all my friends, I had my children really young, but most of my friends are actually doing it now. And I am concerned and a little bit embarrassed about what's going on out there, how they're being fed, how they're, you know, just their basic health and the anxiety pandemic that we have where, you know, we have very high suicide rates and that really, you know, hurts me to the core that souls come here and just want to leave because of what's going on. Can you talk to mm. us about that? 
Yes, yes, I would love to. Because it, it is the case that if we had the answers in this world, if we really had the answers at the level of here, even eat this, take this, do this, we wouldn't be seeing not only the statistics in Scotland, but they're everywhere, Lilia. This is not isolated. Yeah, this no. is the case. We really don't have the answers that we're being led to believe we do. <laughs> so I think it is, it is really a call to action for each of us to champion ourselves and our loved, loved ones. And you said trust and surrender. We've had the answer under our noses all of the time. Yes. It's like, you know, when I started to do my own personal work, what I discovered is that, well, it's just so clear that the, the information that's been known since antiquity tells of stories of people searching, searching, searching outside themselves for the answers for years and decades and they throw their hands in the air and they say, I'm done. I can't find the answer. They stop, they turn around and they go, oh, there it was all along. <laughs> you know, that is the theme of countless uh -huh. stories that we see not only, we see them in the absolutely. Bible as well. Yes, You know, that's, that's the, the prodigal son. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I actually had my own personal experience of this. The very first technique I learned for letting go is called the Sedona Method. And I went to yes. Sedona in Arizona and I had my very first experience of pure bliss. And me and this other guy, we laughed for about 45 minutes hysterically at the joke that that was there all the time <laughs> inside. Yeah. And we'd been out in India you know, crossing your legs, doing all the stuff that you think you need to do, a million books, self-help books, which of course have yep. helped. But it's not that. It's when, you know, that's what I love about Joe Dispenza's work and the understanding of the vagus nerve. And, and yes, maybe food will help you to get where, to the feeling, to, to actually be able to discipline yourself to sit down and go within. I think there is an element all these things can help. But ultimately, you don't need any of these things. <laughs> No, we really do not. It's just quite we hilarious, really, really, isn't it? In this it booming business of self-help, where you know, the, one of my big gripes about uh, and the Heal Scotland movement is that there's nature and going within are free. It doesn't matter what your postcode is, doesn't matter what your income bracket is, doesn't matter how well educated you are. In actual fact, there's a percentage of each population. Describe them how you will, that will get it, and it doesn't matter, you know, what their external circumstances are they just they hear the call and they feel it and they just will go within and solve yes. yeah yes i think so too so i want to really talk to this issue because our, our children are are just a product of us <laughs> oh no and let's be clear <laughs> what was that <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> Well, you know what, That's, it is just that we are programmed. We are so programmed to be on alert. We are programmed for stress. There is a, that voice in our head that is saying, oh, no, instead of potentially hearing, oh, how wonderful. How wonderful is that, that I don't need to find the answer? No, I'm, I can guarantee no one heard, oh, wonderful. This is my doorway to freedom. It was like, oh, my God, if only she knew how I parent. You know, I flip out at the kids and here's the deal. We do have all of the answers, but we have been programmed not to go there. We are literally programmed to avoid doing everything but look under our noses. Yes, yes. Everything but. I have arguments with my, my friends who have been naturopaths for a long time like me and I say, I'm not, they say, but don't you do some supplement? Like, don't you do some supplements? No, I do not. I think you're nuts, actually. I think it's all, <laughs> I think it's all crazy because what we have is, as you said, it's free. Anyone who's ready to hear this will have that inner knowing that is already there. The seed that was planted, the seed that is your truth, that has been waiting for you to look uh -huh. within 
not without, within, that has unwavering eternal love yes. that will heal all of the things that seem to be wrong. It's just that we have to look and be willing because the invitation of willingness to look within comes with the presentation of the obstacles, which I'm going to talk about now because I want this to be really easy to understand for any parent that's listening because we have the capacity to help our children by role modelling how to heal ourselves. Yes, yes. I don't see it being any other way. I, I know plenty of, if I'm going to be really blunt, every mum that's ever come to me has come because they are so afraid. Fear drives their action to come to me to go, what do I do? I'm so, I'm, no, no one ever says it. My child has this, this is the problem. How do I fix that? When the truth is they're coming to me so afraid, so deeply afraid that that is what needs to be addressed not the child's seeming problem. Mm -hmm. And so I want to give some clues for that so that there is, so there is a, a, a path that people can take because it is free. It is mm -hmm. free to look within. It's mm -hmm. not easy because we've not been shown how. Uh -huh. As you said, you've travelled. I've spent, my husband loves me sharing how many hundreds of thousands of dollars I've spent in personal development and travelling all over the world and getting this next training and it's, well over 200,000. <laughs> and so I'm really clear that the answer is, as you said, you travelled to Sedona to discover that the answer was within you the whole time. Absolutely. And so we have, we have a guidance system. We, we have within us an inbuilt mechanism that is just waiting to be unleashed that will heal us and put us on track for a life that is thriving, yes. not just crappy surviving but yes. thriving we have an emotional guidance system and the question that we can just start to ask ourselves is do i feel bad or good that's no one needs to have any education beyond that of course there is a longer list of emotions that we could possibly experience yes. but but let's bung them all into either good or bad yes wanted unwanted mm -hmm. When we are experiencing something unwanted, we're in stress. Yeah. It's simple as. Simple as that. Yep. When we're experiencing something unwanted, we're in stress. And that is not going to be remedied by changing diet. Yeah. By, and the next fancy supplement. Mm -hmm. By finding out what chemicals I have in my body or what my gut gut ecology is. Yeah. And, you it, know, on that note, because I remember Carolyn Mace's brilliant uh, comment, she said, because it's how you are as well, she said, there is nothing worse than a vengeful vegetarian. <laughs> you know, we're putting the focus <laughs> on the food, um, when in actual fact, that, that negative, constant, hostile perception you know, she said, you can eat cat food and if you're just a genuinely kind, altruistic person, you'll fare better than somebody who is hostile um, and eating the alleged Yes, rest. Yes, indeed. And so that is the, the conclusion I've come to after doing my master's in nutrition as well. <laughs> yes. You can eat, frankly, eat whatever you want. How you are nourishing your mind matters more than anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I, I, I know from my own experience that fear drove me to eat very rigidly yes. because that's what naturopaths do. Uh -huh. yes. Fear drove me to feed my child very rigidly because that's what uh -huh. a professional public figure naturopath does. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All the concepts... <laughs> So none of this matters. What we, what we all have the capacity to do is to basically say, forget the rest of the world. This is about my experience and going deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, there, there, are some, there are some experiences at each of the levels going from perception to, to then explore, well, what am I feeling? 
as you would have done in the Sedona method. How does that make me feel? What comes up? Recognizing that our capacity for experiencing the life of bliss that is possible is directly proportional to the discomfort that we're okay experiencing. Mm -hmm. And so when we realize that what, we, what we've been running away from is just emotional energy that has a lifespan that isn't very long, actually. Yeah. Research says an, an energy of discomfort. So if you feel afraid or if you feel scared or if you feel hurt in relationship to anything, whether it's an, a current experience or a memory from 45 years ago, if you sit with it, it actually disappears within 30 to 120 seconds. Yes. <laughs> Which is, you know, another cause for hilarity. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we do have all the power and it starts with how do I feel good or bad mm -hmm. and going within to realize that the reason for that is not what's going on outside. Mm -hmm. What we see outside is the effect. That is the, the surface level of things, what I call the perceptual level. Mm -hmm. We can go deeper and go, well, if that's what I see, how do I feel? And we discover that there's a whole world of stuff that, most of us at first are quite surprised by, I feel all of these things. I had no idea. Absolutely. That's happened to me. I suddenly realized I was having all these feelings that I was, I was completely cut off. I was very in my head and I had a huge amount of stress and I just managed to detach myself from it. Except of course my body suffered dramatically yes. for it. And also on yes. that note, you know, I've been, I'm back at home caring for my mum. And she's had quite a few major health issues that have put her to a very poorly place. And what I realised was what I thought I was seeing was dictating how I was feeling. And then I was like, this isn't, that's not what you think. You've made a story unconsciously up about what you think you can see and you're suffering. And I thought, I can't stay here and look after her feeling like this all the time. I need to realise that what I think I'm seeing <laughs> isn't what I'm seeing so you know so that was a really good lesson for me to realize how often are we doing that like all the time all the time yeah yes so once we we go to that layer of feelings what we what we need to realize is that the perception that I've mentioned that surface level of here's mum sick in bed and and this is terrible we can only see that because there is a whole filtration system going on in order for us to see that. Yes. And freedom comes when we look at how we filter through our feelings, mm -hmm. through our thoughts, through our beliefs. And there it lies the freedom that we have mm -hmm. to explore the deeper truth yes. that is within each and every one of us. We are not isolated meat suits yeah as much as that might be what we see through our eyes we are actually all connected we are all one mm -hmm. we are all here on the same level playing ground experiencing the same pain and suffering that is driving our experiences all of us have deep pain in our unworthiness our our feelings of lack our feelings of struggle, our feelings of victimhood, our feelings of powerlessness. And that is ours to unravel, to see that none of that is true. And so the thing that parents can start to do is to give themselves permission to be peaceful, yeah. to be happy, mm -hmm. to have the love revealed within from which they can extend that to their children because we're all repeating these these unconscious patterns as we were saying before unless we go hang on what's happening here let's pause the life show and and ask some some telling questions mm -hmm. and it starts with how do i feel am i happy about this is that does that go in the good bucket or the bad bucket mm -hmm. because herein lies the clue good well, you're not going to worry about I'm feeling good. We want to, we really want to know what's the bad stuff because that is buying into the illusion. That is where we have filters playing that we're not conscious of 
that yeah. are causing us to see pain. That's why everything that is showing up that we don't want actually is the thing we need to look at. And once you do this once and get a sense of, oh, I can do this, it's, not, it's nowhere near as painful and hard as I thought. You're home and host. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, it's, I always look at it again on this, you know, kind of electromagnetic field and how we've got all these kind of malfunctions in our meridians, whatever, and we can tap them, we can release them with intention or whatever. There's lots of amazing, mm -hmm. powerful techniques. And it's just a case of remembering mm -hmm. to use them. Um, and also, but it's also having the, the balls, I suppose, to go there and say, right, okay, because the, the kind of guilt and shame that we carry, um, from maybe things that we've with hindsight would do differently but we can't change and we have to go right okay what well, if you look at your financial situation health if you like your relationship health um, and yep. your uh, health wealth and your health wealth and um, these are the areas where we we can succeed or not it depending on how you see that because it's always how is it making you feel and if it makes you yep. feel good I mean, somebody who's been in a wheelchair will be very happy if they can walk with a stick, whereas somebody that was running marathons may not be happy walking with a stick. So it's, again, it's all about the framing, isn't it? How, where you've been, where you're coming from, where you want to go. And it's also just getting okay, being patient, you know, because I think that's another thing, isn't it? We want it now because we've, we're so used to Amazon, we can just click a button and get things. And now we're saying, oh, let's just take a bit of time. Nobody else is going to fix you because you actually have to sit and go within and look yeah. at your life. And, you know, having the, I suppose, the, 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 the intelligence, once you touch into it, it doesn't even become a struggle because you're like, well, this is what has to happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the suffering drops away because ultimately it's all about suffering or not suffering. Like you said, it's the contraction or the expansion of this you know incredible cellular experience that we're having um, and the, the more we can stay in that state of trust and the more we can let go of all the concepts and the labels that we've gathered then yeah. the intelligence the divine whatever word you want to use the blueprints there is our birthright yes. it is our birthright it is absolutely our birthright and i'm reminded of of two things um i want to talk about a course in miracles Yes. Because there is a, there's a beautiful co quote that, that comes to mind, and that is, infinite patience produces immediate results. <laughs> yes. And so on, on my journey, I'm, I'm actually in my final year of minister training as a course in miracles, for a course in miracles. Because wow, I think it's, it's, awesome. It's a beautiful, beautiful practice. It's a, it's a self-paced, self-guided journey within, and that is for anyone to do that will reveal the truth organically because I think that the thing that is really key is that most of us don't even know who we are we don't know that we aren't just the human blob we've been led to believe yeah. we are not an isolated unit of pain and suffering like we thought well this is and a whole so, podcast that we need to do <laughs> And so the, the thing that, but this is, this ties back into how the vagus nerve functions. Yes. Because we're either functioning from stress, which is sickness guaranteed, yes. is the cause of, of all physical and emotional dis-ease. It's yeah. the thing. So we're getting, we're going even deeper. We're saying, well, this is mind that's driving brain. Yes. Seemingly. And it's stress or it's not stress. It's the bad or the good. And so when we can begin to anchor in the knowing that we are more than this body, we are far more than this body. Uh -huh. The world has proven scientifically we are more than this body. What, what you look at and you, and when you see yourself in the mirror is, well, frankly, not very much at all and completely insignificant and yet hasn't it been the distraction of your life? absolutely absolutely and so we can we can um, go deeper and and start to nourish ourselves nourish that that depth and strengthen our resolve so that we can do the work because it's it's frankly terrifying when you first start mm -hmm. yes but it is, that doesn't 
mean not to do it because why do you think that we all know why do you think that's so scary because we believe the stories that our ego has told us yeah and it's and it's actually you because you have to be prepared to change your belief systems don't you about the global story right down to the story of who are you yeah it's all rubbish that yes we've been but talking. it becomes easy it beca- you know in the end the decision to stop practicing as a naturopath wasn't hard at all uh-huh. i might have rigidly believed in you need to eat this way or be mm-hmm. but i'm happy to let that go yes we think mm-hmm. our beliefs we believe what's going been going on in our heads and it's just really screwed with us as far as i'm <laughs> concerned yeah. so so we can start to go oh that's interesting if someone's heard there's more to me than just a physical body tap into that love that truth of who you are and that will strengthen you and that will heal your pain and guide you to do the work that's needed and i call it a two-step dance i call it the dance of spotting the stories that we have allowed to just play without questioning them which have been part of that hypnotic rhythm that that subconscious program Mm -hmm. and remembering who i am and all we're doing always is this dance on the journey of transformation. Yes. yes, yes, absolutely. And I think, so what we're really saying, let's just recap, obviously from <clears throat> our children's perspective, and I do this with my grandchildren, I've taught them EFT, I, I, I talk yeah. to them all the time about you can choose how you feel, remember how, I teach them to breathe. I also, when my mum says, oh, do you want a wee cream for that? I always say the body can heal itself. That message is loud and clear, clear. you don't need Beautiful. any yeah toxic cream to help it um so that's you know and my daughter said that's your department i said we, we need to teach them how to respond out there rather than trying to get out there to change so that they can be happy because i think that kind of entitled um victim almost consciousness mm-hmm. as well so mm. we're saying to parents be the this the calm work with your vagus nerve do the daily practices and that, that the children will just mimic that. Absolutely. They're picking up what we're putting down. Is, is, I don't know if that's just an Australian saying, but that's, that's, that's what we're saying. doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they, between the age of zero and seven, they have created the framework that they look to reinforce. And you can see this very clearly in behaviors and so we need to do the work that sets them free uh-huh. we don't need to worry too much about them yes I because love they will just Great. they will just organically learn from our example so we need and to so do it the is work that sets them free that's them it free. in a nutshell yeah. yes and and then i think that it's Dr. Shafali Sabri has a, has a beautiful quote about shifting the paradigm from parenting the child to parenting the parent. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, it is us that needs to do the work. It's not anything wrong with our kids. Yes. And there never is. You know, in the end, the truth is you can't get it wrong. We can, we can learn to relax quite easily and quite quickly. And so we can make make our lives and our homes far more peace filled and our children respond to that so it is lovely to verbally teach them the tools but Mm. they aren't going to get that if that's not what you're displaying it's going to be very confusing so we can say to our children you just have to relax (laughs) (laughs) and that generally comes that generally comes from mum who's who might be saying those words but everything about the body language is everything but relax. Yes. And so it, we make it really, really difficult for ourselves to, to, to even talk about, well, what do we do for the children? Well, we, we do the work for the children. Yes. yes. We, have to do the, we have to be the ones doing the work. It doesn't work any other way and, and in fact, confuses them even more. But um, once you get to that point, yeah, using all the skills and tools you've just mentioned is great. Yes, and I think, you know, you said, because again, the language that the body, that the, the subconscious is picking up is not the words. The body can hear the lie because people are yeah. saying things, and we all know that intuitively. You're like, you're talking rubbish because you know yep. the truth. 
it's the conscious versus the subconscious. So I think what we're what we're really seeing is that utilizing the power of this vagus nerve, which is also known as the social nerve, isn't it? Often, um, is yeah. that we can be peace, and when we yes. are truly feeling peaceful, then our children will automatically benefit from that. So rather than to try yeah. and to fix something. Yes. The more we work on ourselves, I love that. That's absolutely profound. And again, it's just the way you hear it sometimes, isn't it? You know that, you know, if you if you can be um, be the change you want to see in the world, it's back to that ancient exactly. an ancient wisdom. Yep. Yeah. None of this is new. No. <laughs> this is not new. <clears throat> but the mind has taken us away on this crazy intellectual journey that we aren't and you know it it drives me insane you know all the the belief that the, the underlying beliefs that i saw even in the community that i ran was that one you need to have a lot of money to heal and you need to have somebody else to help you which of course we're a collective species and that's why we're setting up a, a community where people can come and learn all this stuff but primarily before you get too sick to actually need or perceive that you need anything else because once mm. if you can start to go oh do you know what my energy levels aren't right my relationships are causing me stress i'm not fulfilling my purpose in the job and you can just come and go right okay how, how can i unravel that because again we've, we've got google we don't need any more knowledge it's practice we need <laughs> yeah That's, i agree i agree entirely i think it's not it's no one needs another book no one uh, needs another intellectual anything yes it is the biggest distraction of our world. Yes, absolutely. When the answers lie within, uh -huh. <laughs> nothing can prepare us for the experience that we need to, to take. And it takes us going, okay, one, two, three, let's dive in. Let's have the experience. We've got to have the practical experience because it's beyond intellectual. Yes. And it is, it is a journey. It is a journey to discover who you really are, the greatest gift of your life, and the gift that I believe every parent can give their children is to do the work that sets them free. Well, that is a beautiful way to end a fascinating podcast. Sally, thank you so much for all that you do and give and that you, how you teach. Your clarity is just absolutely inspiring to me. It's, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure getting up early to tune into Australia. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so lovely to speak with you as well. I know that we could keep going for hours. We just would yeah. need more tea. Now, what I would like to say to you <laughs> is if people want to work with you one-to-one, -one, we have a, an app called Heal Scotland, which is for <laughs> every human on the planet. I called it Heal Scotland because my focus is starting here in my own home country. But anybody in Australia who's listening, you, if you want to download the app, it will be relevant for you because it's for humans. <laughs> daily reminders because a lot of the time it's just remember 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 so we're using the app to just gently remind people and give them inspiration our movement is threefold create a groundswell education and inspiration for those who need to learn a little bit more and then a, a support network that's what we believe where people help people for because they're human and they know we're interconnected so if you yes. i can put your details through the app so for people listening yes. to this they can sure. find out you can send me your links. If there's any offers that you'd like to give our listeners, we can put all of that through the app. I'm on the website, which is all about to yes. be launched, all singing and dancing, um, so that people can connect with you directly. Beautiful. So thank you again so much. Have a wonderful day.